In this series of videos, we're going to be taking a look at the Excel 2013 Unit B, which is all about working with formulas and functions. After the completing this unit, you will be able to create a complex formula, insert a function, type a function, copy and move cell entries, understand relative and absolute cell references, copy formulas with relative cell references, copy formulas with absolute cell references, and round a value with a function. Now most students generally do have, this is one of the major problems they have in Excel and that is using formulas and functions. Uh, generally most of the time when I do go through and grade uh, through the Excel unit A, most students just want to type in the answer. They don't want to use the formulas and functions because they're not used to it. And hopefully this uh, series of videos is going to help you understand why it's important to really understand and to adopt and utilize these formulas and functions. Now in Unit A, we worked with just simple formulas, which is when we only use one arithmetic operator, such as adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. And uh, on a page Excel 26, we're going to be talking about creating a complex formula. And a complex formula is one that uses more than one arithmetic operator. Now you might, for example, need to create a formula that uses addition and multiplication. In formulas containing more than one arithmetic operator, Excel will use uh, the order of precedence or uh, rules to determine which operation to perform first. Now you can change the order of precedence uh, in a formula by using the parentheses around the part you want to calculate first. Uh, you may know this as the order of operations. Uh, my math teacher taught me this as please excuse my dear man, uh, Aunt Sally. Uh, your math teacher may have taught you in a different kind of saying where we talk about parentheses uh, for the please, uh, exponent as the excuse, uh, m for the my um, multiplication, uh, d for the division, dear, a addition for the ant, and s subtraction for the sally. So that kind of tells you how uh, you need to go about and complete the order of operations uh, when you're using the arithmetic operators uh, on there. Uh, but, like I said, you can change the order of that by using parentheses because parentheses are always going to be done first. And you put parentheses around the part you want to calculate first. So if you were wanting to calculate uh, a formula that was going to be using addition and multiplication, uh, generally multiplication would be done first, but if you want the addition to be done first, you would have to put that in parentheses to make it done first uh, on there. Uh, and we'll take a look at some of those examples because if you would put in a formula that would be, and I'll just type this in over here on the side, um, on there, let me just get a new uh, power, uh, new uh, spreadsheet here. And if we go through here and if we take a look, and if I would just input in uh, the formula of equals four plus two times five. Now, if I would hit my enter on this, it's going to give me the answer of 14. Because in this case, the order of operation is going to dictate that multiplication is performed before addition. However, if I type in that same thing, except for this time, I'm going to put parentheses around the 4 plus 2. And then I'm going to hit my uh, times 5. When I do that, you notice that it is now 30 because what it's going to do here is it's going to take the 4 plus 2 which will give me 6 and then 6 times 5 that will give me 30 and in this case what it did was it did the multiplication first so it did 2 times 5 that gave me 10 10 plus 4 gives me 14 so depending upon how you have that formula written out uh, is how it's going to be done in Excel uh, that's on there because when you work with formulas that contain with more than one operator the order of precedence is very important because it affects the final value, as we've seen right here. Now Excel performs the calculations in a particular sequence based on the following rules, and it's a little bit different than the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally on that, now, because operations inside parentheses are calculated before any other operation. So if you want that to be done first, put it in parentheses. Then reference operators such as ranges are calculated first. Uh, on there. So that's uh, once we have the parentheses on there. Uh, then we have any ranges. And then after that we have exponents are calculated next. Then we have any multiplication and division. 
So in this case, instead of doing multiplication then division, it lumps multiplication and division together as one kind of grouping of operators. And it will progress from left to right uh, on there. So if you have multiplication and division, whatever is on the far left-hand side will be done first, and then uh, it will keep on going to the right. And then, of course, finally, addition and subtraction are going to be calculated last, and that's also going to be done from left to uh, right on there as well. So that is the order of precedence that's on there that you do need to understand. Okay, so let's take a look and let's put this into um, play on there, because what we're going to do is we're going to look at this tour expenses, and we're going to work with this uh, file here that um, we're going to be correct, uh, calculating a 20% increase in these tour expenses. So the first thing you want to do is you want to download and open up the exb1 file from Course Sites. And of course, if it opens up in Protective View, you want to make sure that you enable it for editing. That way, so you can make some changes to it, and that way, so you can now see your tabs and ribbon. Then next, what we want to do is we want to save this file. So we're going to click on our File tab, click on Save As. And then you want to save it to where you save your files at. You know, if it's on your My Documents, if it's in your home directories. Uh, for me right now, I'm just going to save this onto my desktop. And what we're going to save this as, we're going to save this as exb tour expense analysis. And that's what ultimately what we're going to be doing on here. We're going to do an analysis of the tour expenses. Once we have this as our file name, we want to click on Save, and of course we'll notice that the file name changes up in the title bar. The next, Step 2, this is where we're going to start out on page 26, tells us that we want to select the range B4 to B11. So we're selecting this range right here, B4 to B11. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Quick Analysis Tool. Uh, on there which is down here and this is what we call the quick analysis tool when we click on that now it comes up with a set of tools that we can use now this is new for 2013 that's out there and what we're going to do is is that we have this breaking uh, broken up into different categories we have formatting charts totals tables and sp uh, spark lines we want to click on totals here and so we're going to click on the totals tab and once again this is brand new for 2013 when we click on the totals tab, we'll notice that we have the sum, average, count, percent total, a running total, and then of course we have the sum uh, on there as well. What we're going to do is, is that it tells us that we want to click the auto sum button, and of course that's the one that just says sum here uh, on there. We want to click on this right here, and of course that is going to add that up uh, for us. And of course the newly created value will display now in cell B12. Uh, on there. And it has a darker appearance than the figures in the selected range. So if we would click on cell B12, we would see that's the same thing as clicking as the auto sum over here. So that's just another way of performing some other calculations is selecting your range and then clicking on that quick analysis tool button uh, on there. Now once we have this on here, uh, we don't have to go through and perform that step again because what we want to do is we want to fill this formula in all the way over here to cell E12. And to do this, instead of just copying and pasting, we want to click on the lower right hand side and we notice our mouse pointer will change to a thin black plus sign. And if we click on that and just drag it over, uh, and that's what we call the fill handle, if we drag this fill handle to cell E12 and then release it, we'll notice that the formula in cell B12 has now been copied to cells C12, D12, and E12. And the copied cells have the same dark appearance as the cell B12. And of course you can take a look that the references have all been changed. So here it was looking for B4 to B11, here it's looking for C4 to C11, and so forth uh, on there. So once again, that's a very important reason why you want to use this tool instead of just going, okay, let me grab my calculator and let me add these up and then I'll type the answer in here. Uh, because in addition to that being very quick, few clicks, I've got all these totals here. Now, if I make any changes up here, those are all going to be updated automatically. So make sure that you do use uh, the formulas and the functions in here to save yourself a whole bunch of time. 
Now on step five, step five tells us that we want to click on cell B14. And on here we're going to be creating the complex formula. And of course uh, when the mode indicator on the status bar says point uh, on there, uh, cells you click are added to the formula. So watch as we do this. So if I would click or if I type the equal sign in, of course now it says enter, and if I go up here and it tells me I want to click cell B12 and of course notice that when I click on cell B12 that's when my status bar says it's now in point mode uh, on there and of course that means that this cell is going to be added to the formula so in step 5 I've clicked cell B14 I've typed in my formula prefix which is my equal sign and then I've clicked cell B12 next I want to type in a plus sign and of course this is the first part of the formula that we are going to be using a reference to the total expenses for quarter one and that's what this number is in cell B12. Once we have that, so we're going to take that number plus we're going to add it and step six tells us we're going to click cell B12 again but this time we're going to type in multiplied times 0.2 on there. Now this is the second part of the formula in which it's going to add a 20% increase to the original value of the cell uh, on there. And of course in the, that's the total expenses for quarter one. So if we read this formula on here, we're going to take this value here plus 20% of this value because remember if we go through the order of operations on this, multiplication is going to be done first. So it's going to take this number times 0.2, which is the same thing as 20%. So that's going to find 20% of this number, and it's going to add it back to that number. So that's going to be multiplying, or that's going to be adding on 20% to this number. Once you have this formula typed in this way, we want to click on the enter button next to the formula bar, or on the formula bar, and we see that the result of uh, 41,789. 556 has now appeared in cell B14 and this shows a 20% rise in the expenses for quarter one of the total expenses for quarter one and of course uh, I know it's kind of difficult at times to you know uh, especially when you get some of these math questions and everything that's asking you for a 20% increase or 15% increase or whatever but that's the formula to use it with and if you can understand that formula and know how to use that formula you can actually use Excel in your other classes to help you do your math work uh, on there so this is very valuable so if we take a look at step 8 step 8 tells us we want to press our tab key and here we're going to go through and we're going to type in this formula again just as some practice so we're going to hit our equal sign click on cell C12 this time and we're going to add it to it cell C12 and we're going to multiply it by 0.2 or that's the same thing as saying 20 percent and we're going to click on our enter button so once, we, once again that's a 20 percent increase uh, in on there and your result in this case should be 41,352.912 now step 9 tells us that we're going to drag the fill handle from cell C14 and we're going to drag it over to E14 now we could have done this on the previous step uh, on here once we filled in the first one we could have filled in the rest of the uh, cells here you could do that uh, that was just ultimately just kind of giving us a uh, an additional practice on creating this complex formula that's on there now of course you'll notice that the calculated values appear in the selected range now dragging the fill handles on a cell copies the cells contents or continues a series of data uh, which uh, course you know if you're having like a series of numbers or things like quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four if you were going to fill that into other cells it would actually continue on that series as well so it either copies the uh, formula or continues a series of data uh, into the adjacent cells and this is what we call autofill uh, that's on there so if uh, I'll just kind of do this over here if I had a series of numbers and let's just say that uh, I, I do do the quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four um, so if I would just type in quarter one 
and quarter two. And really that's all I would need is just the first two. Once I select those, I can use my fill handle, and of course notice there's three, four, uh, you know, I can continue that. Uh, on there and of course it would go for four quarters and then of course then it would start again with new quarters uh, because there's only four quarters uh, in a year uh, or if I wanted to do let's just say players so I can just say you know or I can just say player one or you know here's players one you know I can either go and I can just click on the fill handle here and boom there's a series that's already been created and this is what we call the auto fill that's on there very quick, very easy way of filling in information that's on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that for now. Now, of course, you can also copy the formulas by selecting the range and using the fill button as well. Now, the fill handle, I prefer it because it's real easy and quick. But, you know, you could also, if we didn't have these on here as well, we could just click on this cell right here, select this range here, and then use this fill button up here in the editing group, and we can just fill to the right because wherever that little black bar is at, that's where the formula is at, and we can fill to the right, and we get the same results. Of course, go ahead and uh, right at this time, just save your work. Now, of course, you can use apps as well. This is uh, just some re additional reading that's on the page of uh, bottom of Excel 26 uh, for Office to improve your worksheet functionality. Now, Excel has more functionality than simple and complex math compu uh, compilations. Uh, or math formulas uh, that's on there. Now using the apps for office feature found in the apps group on the insert tab you can insert an app into your worksheet that accesses the web and adds functionality to your work. Many of the available apps are free and can be used to create an email, appointment, meeting, contact, or task, or be a reference source such as a mini calendar and date picker. When you click the apps for office button you see any recently used apps. Click See All to display any featured apps and go to the Office Store to view available apps. When you find the app that you want, make sure you're logged into your Office.com uh, account. Of course, you may need to log in again. Click the app, click Add, and then follow the prompts to download the app. Click the Apps for Office button, click See All, click the app you just added, and click on Insert. So if we did want to add any apps or anything, you would have to go into that insert uh, that's on there and use this apps button that's on here uh, on there. So we could see all the different apps that are available. Um, of course, this tells us that uh, most of us will probably need a Microsoft account to use the apps from the store, and that's where you may need to log in again for that. Uh, we're not going to worry about apps for now. We're not going to require those uh, for this course, but that um, you know, if you do use this at home, that is an option for you as well uh, to use that. Well, that concludes the information about creating a complex formula. In our next video, we're going to be talking about inserting in functions, which is another very, uh, very valuable uh, feature in Excel. Uh, so make sure that you do save your work and you're ready to move on to the next video.